The neck and shoulders and by extension the arms are the second most common locations for TMS next to, of course, the lower back. It's the major pain site for about 25% of TMSers. However, TMS can involve many different locations in the body and it tends to move around. The subconscious usually creates one major pain site at a time, and one of its favorites is this upper back, neck, and shoulder area. So if you've got pain there, it's most likely TMS. Let's discuss how this happens and what's really going on here. Hi folks, I'm John Thornton with the Pain Care Clinic where we teach people how to cure their chronic pains. And before we get started, I wanted to give you our free workshop for curing TMS. You know, Dr. Sarno's books are great, but they don't have a step-by-step -step process on how to cure TMS. Our free workshop does, and you can pick it up at paincareclinic.us and there's a link below. Now the pain producing process may involve three types of tissue, muscle, nerve, and tendon. When nerves are involved, they are usually found in and around the muscles that have been targeted by the subconscious mind for the attack. For example, when lumbar and glute muscles are targeted, the sciatic nerves are also involved much of the time. TMS is unpredictable and that's what makes the healing process so difficult. Sometimes it's only the muscles, sometimes it's only the nerves, and any tendon in the body may be targeted by the subconscious for pain. Now, in the mind-body prescription, Dr. Sarno says that the most frequently involved muscle in the neck and shoulder area is the upper trapezius, which extends from the back of the head down to the top of the shoulder and out to the bony area behind the shoulder on either side. In about one out of four TMSers, all or part of the upper trapezius may be painful. Clients usually report that there was no particular event that caused the pain to start. But this neck and shoulder area can be really painful, especially if it runs down the arm and even into the hand. Pain may radiate with feelings of numbness and tingling and weakness. And many times this gets labeled as peripheral neuropathy. However, the nerve structure that is responsible for the pain is most likely the brachial plexus, which is a collection of nerves located deep beneath the upper trapezius muscles. Dr. Sarno believed that the plexus in patients with neck and shoulder pain was a victim of mild oxygen deprivation. However, very often when the pain is in the neck and shoulders, it may be attributed to a strain. If there is added arm pain, diagnostics will invariably show structural abnormality as the cause, or at least that's what they'll tell you. Doctors often use this term pinched nerve Although Dr. Sarno pointed out that if a nerve was really pinched, you would be instantly paralyzed from then on. One 1986 study published by the Medical College of Wisconsin showed that degeneration of discs, bone spurs, and osteoarthritis in the neck occur at the same rate in people with and without neck pain. And also a 1990 study of 400 participants without shoulder pain by UCSF Medical School found that rotator cuff tears were present in 89% or 361 of the 400 participants without shoulder pain. So almost everyone with and without shoulder pain has rotator cuff tears. These findings would suggest that there is no correlation between structural abnormalities and most neck and shoulder pain. The TMS theory that Dr. Sarno developed states that internal psychological states are responsible for all psychogenic physical maladies. They occur with great variation that can include almost any part of the body, but especially the upper back, neck, shoulders, and arms. Conventional medicine continues to resist these concepts even when presented with convincing evidence. This, I think, reflects a deep bias against the mind-body connection by medical schools and at the same time a conviction that laboratory science is the only valid science. 
But TMS cannot be tested in laboratories. Unconscious negative emotions cannot be discovered by high-tech imaging equipment, and negative emotions cannot be surgically removed in the operating room. But they are, nonetheless, very, very real. Okay, folks, that's it for this video. And don't forget to pick up that free TMS workshop before you go. It takes over where Dr. Sarno's books left off. Thanks for watching.